Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our Let's Play series against XTRG. It is May 2nd of 1942, we're into the beginning of spring of the war, and things may soon, hopefully, let's pray, start turning in the Allies' favor. We're only about a week away from the USS Hornet, uh, our fifth carrier, um, becoming available on the U.S. East Coast. Whoa. A Japanese submarine is firing torpedoes at a destroyer of ours off the coast of Rockhampton. Depth charging right back. And you can see here the task force that was being torpedoed is the one with the New Orleans, the Pensacola, the Perth, the Anderson, the Voyager, etc. Another Japanese submarine spotted off the northwest coast of Australia here. You can see a light cruiser and some destroyers of ours spotted it, no damage done. Yes, we engaged that guy twice. Um, was that a hit but no explosion, or did we miss? I wasn't paying attention. But apparently we just tried to torpedo a Japanese sub-tender uh, at Midway, which is definitely something I want to take a strike at. If he's going to base a sub-tender at Midway, that is problematic. It will let him base his subs forward for a much greater period of time, and that's definitely something I want to do something about. Typical Mark 14s right there. By the way, the Mark 14 had like a 25% effectiveness rate, I think, something like that. There's no way this game has given me one out of four uh, Mark 14s. I question the math there. Okay. Something just exploded. Do we see what it was? Four more torpedoes launched at the Grandpa or by the Grampus. No hits there. It's XCOM math. Okay. A lot of recon going on here. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of interesting stuff at the moment. He continues to attack our uh, subs at Ambon with anti-submarine um, aircraft. You can see he has some recon out near Rangoon. You can also see PBY Catalina spotting a bunch of different task forces in and around Palmyra, where the carrier task force of the Japanese Navy is. Two Japanese fortresses are unable to find their target due to range or weather. That's interesting. So apparently our B-17Ds did fly out of Johnston Island, despite it being a smaller airfield. So that's good to see. Meanwhile, Japanese Zeros here are attacking or sweeping over Sorobaya. You can see here our pitiful Dutch Air Force continues to put up pitiful resistance uh, and, uh, and whatnot. You can see here six more Nels and 30 Oscars coming in. We'll fast forward through that. Fast forward through that. None of this stuff is super interesting at the moment. Just a lot of recon, a lot of low-level sweeps and things like that. Was the Mark 10 the air-launched torpedo? I thought they used a Mark 14 variant in the air-launched torpedo, and that was part of the problem. Right, 47 Sallies are hitting Batan, so he's definitely stepping up the pressure on Batan. We're still doing a fair bit of damage with our flak against these guys. He didn't hit the supply depots at all. Meanwhile, you can see he's got more KI-30 Ans, Army Dive Bombers, and then 12 KI-21 Sallies coming in a separate raid. So... Okay, so here it is. Here's the big moment. Our fighters are engaging a Japanese raid here on Singapore. Uh, it looks like 20 Ki-51 Sonyas, 20 Ki-30 Ans, and 11 Ki-32 Marys. Um, we it said we had like 50 Wildcats, I thought. So we've got more we've got more Wildcats than what than what we're seeing right here. But currently up on on cap anyway, we've got the 26 Wildcats and two British Fulmers. You can see here we're engaging the Nates uh, first. The enemy fighter screen uh, out front. He doesn't have any good fighters here. Now, the problem with this raid is, as much as I, I'm happy 
that he's bombing or that he's trying to bomb us and that we're sweeping. I was really hoping to see some sallies here. A big part of us doing what we were doing was my hope is we could repeat our earlier successes at Singapore, where he sent Sally bombers into Singapore and our fighters completely savaged him. I think in a two-day period, we destroyed something like an entire month's production, or maybe more, uh, in, in January of his, of his main army bomber. And so that was what my hope was, that we could do something similar, because if we could do that, not only would it slow the destruction of the force at Singapore, it would also hinder his operations either in the Dutch East Indies or uh, in Burma. Um, the, the guys that we're hitting here are not going to really make a difference one way or the other there. It's nice to be engaging these guys. Uh, and it's nice to, to, you can see we're getting a lot of kills here. So that those are good results. But um, it's not... It's not exactly what I had hoped for. But we'll see. There could be a second raid coming. Uh, let's go ahead and fast forward through here and see. Whoa! Look at those Nate numbers drop. And the Sonyas and Ands. Uh, will the pilot losses have a significant impact, Tortuga? Mm, I don't know. Depends how many. Let's see. What did he lose? Seven Nates. Eight Anns, four Marys, and twelve Sonyas. The Anns and the Nates are the most valuable of those forces. Wow, we only lost one Fulmer two uh, destroyed, so that's or damaged, so that's good. Um, looks like they were coming in at seventeen thousand feet. Yeah, I mean these guys carry shit bombs. The Sonyas carry fifty kilogram bombs. The Marys and the Anns carry a better payload, two hundred fifty kilogram. But all of these units are second line units that we just ambushed. Looks like we've got a second raid coming in. It's just the Tojos. It'll be interesting to see how we perform against this. This is his next army frontline fighter. For some reason, Japan starts off with a, with a squadron of eight KI-44 Tojos in China. I think it was some sort of like prototype squadron. Um, and it is, it is a very good fighter. It is the next army fighter. I think it ends up replacing the Oscars. Um, but he, he can't build them at the beginning of the war. He just has like a single squadron of them. Um, I don't know when it starts coming off production lines, probably somewhere in the middle of 42, um, but at least right now this is the limit of these. These are his absolute crack um, uh, squadron of prototypes, so good results if we, can, if we can shoot a few of these down. Doesn't make a huge difference, but I'm guessing he's probably got better pilots uh, in here. Okay, you can see one of them destroyed. We lost one. one. You can see the results here much better. Ful the Fulmer 2 one destroyed. You can see here the the full the uh, F4 F3A one destroyed as well. Oh, thank you very much for the resub there, Kushin. Uh, so you can see we lost two to one aircraft. That's kind of to be expected. The Tojo is very good, but anyway, any of those we can destroy all the better. We've got twelve B17s coming into Nomaya here, going against Japanese Ki-43 1C Oscars. I think we're doing an airfield strike from about fifteen thousand feet. We'll fast forward through that. Seven of the B-17s made it through. We had two B-17s damaged. Only one runway hit. A second raid coming in here with three B-17Ds. Apparently there's eight Oscars intercepting. No losses on either side. No runway hits or anything like that. Another raid here of two B-17Ds coming through. Uh, uh, the cap does nothing. We get one more runway hit. No real meaningful damage there. That's the problem is the B-17s are just not... All that effective. You'd think they should be, right? The big four engine heavies, but like a rate of 20 of them, 15,000 feet, they're not gonna do jack diddly. Okay, more recon. I think we're into the PM phase of air operations. Another Japanese raid, five G4 M1 Bettys off of the Dutch East Indies. They're attacking our PT boats, which we sent down here to try and wreck uh, one of his invasion task forces where he had some APDs. Looks like that enemy landing force's uh, naval vessels may be gone, but uh, we forced him to sortie some, some Bettys and use some torpedoes or bombs or something. It's Friday, 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 uh. Uh, well, we'll find out in a moment, Sean. You can hang out for a few minutes. Meanwhile, we've got some PBY uh, Catalinas here going against a Japanese heavy cruiser to the east of Palmyra. They must be flying at a 
Palmyra. I don't think I issued orders for the guys on Christmas Island to attack him. No enemy caps, so he did break these guys. It looks like the carriers are still up here. He did break these guys off. He's sending some raiding task forces in. This guy's a, a, a to the tone. I don't know if they're going to bombard or if they're looking for shipping. All right, the Gar is in Tulagi, and it's being attacked by enemy ASW. Fortunately, no damage there. Okay. All right, well, not a super... Um Interesting turn. Japanese deliberate attack against a headquarters unit of ours here in eastern China. Japanese deliberate attack against the 46th Corps, which I tried to move in here. I was mainly trying to get it destroyed, but these guys won't all die. They just keep retreating. So we lost another 24 squads and 521 men, but I really wanted the new uh, I really wanted the new unit. If it gets wiped out, then it'll automatically reform at Chongqing, which would have been nice. Okay, meanwhile, Japanese bombardment attack at Kaigan. We lose seven casualties. He actually loses 38 casualties. His counter his bombardments are not going very well for him. Deliberate attack at Marami. In the Dutch East Indies. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for Roti yet here on the uh, west coast of Timor. All right, so we're doing a shock attack here against the second Japanese raiding regiment. These are the paratroopers who took this city over here, who then apparently moved east of the river, and we have a large army formation here attacking them, hopefully going to finish them off. Fast forward through that, 1,036 to 1 combat odds, unit destroyed. So we lost no units destroyed, a few units disabled, but nothing destroyed. Meanwhile, he lost 881 men, 19 squads, 41 non-combatants, 10 engineers, 4 guns unit destroyed. He can reform it, obviously, in Japan, but then he's got to use production and other things like that to replace his losses. Also, the victory points. Okay, Japanese deliberate attack here in central China fails miserably against a very small force of our own. 18 Japanese casualties, 7 allied casualties. It's like a minor skirmish! It's but a flesh wound! Vavu expands fortifications to level 2. Digilap expands fortifications to size 3. That won't even matter because I don't think I'm going to fight it, Digilap. And I think that's it for the turn. So I'm curious to see how many aircraft we actually destroyed. The combat results seemed like, what was it, like 20-something, 30-something maybe? Um, but I'm, a lot of times that sort of under-reports. I always find the intelligence screen more meaningful. Okay. All right, let's get back in. All right, so intelligence screen, well, actually, well, is this? All right, before we, sorry. Intelligence screen, Japan flew 4,128 sorties so far today. Er, today, we only flew 2211. I'm not doing a good enough job training. 60 air-to-air -air combat losses for the Japanese today against a seven of our own. One allied aircraft destroyed on the field. Two operational losses, also claiming 21 Japanese operational losses. If these numbers are accurate, which obviously fog of war does exist, but if these numbers are accurate, that is 81 Japanese aircraft lost to a total tally for the day of 11 for the Allies. When we go in here, or I guess 10, says 81 to 10 here when I go in here. If I take a look at the aircraft, we shot down or destroyed 28 enemy Ki-27B Nates. Again, it doesn't really matter. Those are second-line fighters, but I'm assuming he's not producing any of these right now. He's probably shifted production completely onto his Oscars. So if that's the case, he may struggle filling that air unit back up. He'll have to pull Oscars from other units. And it also means, you know, 19 air-to-air -air losses. That's a lot of pilots that are killed. Now, whether that actually makes a difference at all, 
I don't know, right? Like, if he loses 30 or 40 pilots today, it's a hindrance, but... You know, you got to keep that kind of pressure up continuously throughout the war to really bleed through his his quality airmen. One day like this is not is not the end of the world. But it is worth remembering Japan has already lost 1,282 aircraft against only 995 Allied aircraft. He's lost a lot of frontline units, 253 Zeros, 97 of those air-to-air, -air, 63 of those to flak. The op losses tend to have more survived crews, but the flak and air-to-air -air losses, you lose a lot of men, especially since he's been on the offensive. So most of those losses are over enemy bases, which means you're not recovering very many pilots. He's also lost 143 KI-21 Sallies uh, in air-to-air -air combat, 210 of those total. He's lost 107 KI-27B Nates, 28 of those today. So we basically increased his, uh, his total losses of Nates by more than a third in a single day. Um, 99 Bettys, 90 Nels. Um, again, all, a lot of these units are destroyed in air-to-air -air combat, so the attrition over time hopefully will eat through his pilot training. He's definitely set up pilot training bases in Japan to rapidly train up large numbers of pilots. I don't know how, um, I don't know how, how many pilots Japan can keep trained, uh, but the more we kill, the better, right? Meanwhile, he also lost 26 KI-51 Sonyas in air-to-air -air combat, 25 KI-30 Ans, 8 Marys. We lost 4 Hawks. He apparently lost 3 Tojos, which would be great. 1 air-to-air, -air, 2 in Ops losses. That would be half of his available Tojos at this moment, I believe. I think it's a squadron of 8. Uh, could be more, but I think it's a squadron of 8. I'd have to go back into the, the first turn uh, for Japan and see what that looks like. Not, not XRG's first turn, but like... If I was to start a new scenario, you can look and see because they start the game with it. Um, two KI-46 Dinas, uh, two KI-43 1C Oscars, uh, two Zeros, and uh, we lost some Buffaloes and Hawks over the Dutch East Indies. In terms of our fleet carrier arm, we only lost one Wildcat in air-to-air -air combat, and we lost uh, one Fulmer II in air-to-air -air combat. So we destroyed over 60 enemy aircraft, actually over 70 enemy aircraft over Singapore at a loss of two aircraft for ourselves. So that does help. Um, last question about this. What about Allied pilot training? Does it help CV Flyboys XP? Uh, allied, allied pilots do get better with experience, and the more they fly, the more experience they get, and having better experienced crews does help you a lot. Pilot training also does help you a lot for the Allies. If we take a look at one of these groups here, you can see we've got several pilots here. C.W. McCluskey, who I think was a hero of Midway, J.S. Gray, uh, F.T. Corbin. You can see a lot of these guys here, 81, 81, 81, 80. These are crack air groups. These are by far my best pilots uh, not just the squadron, but the, the carrier air arm is the best trained allied uh, air air units in the game to start, very much so. You can see in this group we got two kills in a couple of cases, several guys with one kill. These guys were off which carrier? These guys were off the Enterprise because they had to leave one plane behind. So we'll go ahead and we'll transfer these guys back to the Enterprise. We'll get them out of Singapore right away. Okay. I want to make sure which pilots go with Corbin Hickman, McCluskey. So all the good guys uh, get pulled get pulled back. Good. I think there was like one aircraft there that had the yeah two aircraft. Two Wildcats are damaged. They have to be left behind. One of them will be ready in one day. One, uh, one will take four days. So we may lose a few more a few more air airplanes uh, potentially. But what I'll probably do is, since these guys have a range of 15, I'll do one of two things. For the for the air for the airplanes that are damaged, then what I will do is I will fly them from Singapore to Seabang, from Seabang to Port Blair, from Port Blair to Rangoon, and then I will probably get them back to like Karachi and then like transport them by ship, and a month later they will show up on the U.S. East Coast. Not I don't even know if it's worth doing that. We'll consider that, but I could do that if 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 I if I really wanted to, uh, just to make sure that we don't actually lose those aircraft. I could also just disband the group as well. Um, VF-3, you can see here, 22 aircraft. Three of them were damaged. Uh, one of them will be ready tomorrow. Some of them will take as long as a week. Um, well, like a G-Man, we'll have to see where the carriers are. But this group, meanwhile, if we take a look at these pilots, you can see this is the, the squadron that has thatch in it. He got one kill. You can see a couple of pilots in this group got three kills each. 
Um, you can see the green means their experience went up this turn. So if you have a green experience value, it means this most recent turn, your experience went up. If you have an orange value, it means your experience went up, I think, like within this last week or month or something like that. Um, but orange means a recent experience increase. Green means an experience increase this turn. So you can see a bunch of pilots' experience went up uh, as a result of their, their, their battle there. This group is off of the Saratoga, so we're going to go ahead and transfer these guys on ship back to the Saratoga uh, to get them back on board. Why did it pop up all the way up here? Yeah, I could bring the Hermes in and ferry him that way too. Um, meanwhile, the 16F4F3A Wildcats of VF2, which is off the Lexington, uh, these guys got some experience as well. They also had um, some guy got three kills. TF Cheek, I have no idea who he is. Uh, uh, CE Brewer got two kills and a couple of single kill guys. So we'll go ahead and transfer these guys. What was it again? It was the Lexington. So we'll go ahead and get these guys back on board the Lexington. Yes, Charcoal, I was going to make a cheeky comment, but I didn't. Okay, and that leaves VF-42, which is in the best shape of all of these guys. Uh, they lost one aircraft, apparently, um, or they have lost one aircraft. Um, I don't know if it was this turn or not. Uh, they're carrier-based, 27 aircraft, no aircraft damage in this group, uh, so the entire squadron can pull out. Um, you can see here some of the guys got two, a bunch of guys got two kills. These guys are a slightly less experienced group, nobody over 80. Uh, nonetheless, it's pretty sweet that we can get this entire group out. Uh, the only carrier left to put them on is the Yorktown, so these guys must be off Yorktown. Happy the guy, a guy from the Brewers got a, or whatever. Nah, I don't know. I don't really care. All right, and then we got these British Fulmer 2s. Anybody here get any kills? Wow, we got four pilots off the Fulmers who got some kills. They probably would have done better against the Japanese bombers, I suspect. In any event, we'll go ahead and transfer them back to the Indomitable. Indomitable. Um, and I think they had to leave two planes behind, but I think they were actually reserve planes um, that they flew in out of the carrier with. So you can see we did have to leave eight aircraft behind um, at Singapore. It doesn't mean we'll lose eight air or ten aircraft total, but even a you know if it's if it's a 7 to 1 kill to death ratio, I think it's definitely worth it. And the loss of 10 aircraft total really doesn't change the overall strength of the air groups. You can see here that the Lexington, the Saratoga, the Enterprise, all these guys um, are pretty good shape. They need a little bit of fuel. They're a little bit low on fuel. 60, 69% is a little bit low. Um... What do I have the uh, bombing groups here set to? Are they doing anything? Yeah, they're doing naval search. So, in any event, so I pulled out the carriers. Right, not pulled out the carriers. I pulled out the pilots. So I think what we're actually going to do is we're going to return to Perth. I know it's kind of crazy that I sailed all the way up this way, and I'm just going to do one turn worth of stuff. I could move into the Indian Ocean, but I feel like if I move the carriers into the Indian Ocean, they'd be a little bit wasted there. Um, the intent here, again, was to so savage his bomber formation that he is delayed in reducing Singapore and delayed in and moving to Burma or to the Dutch East Indies. If I was to classify this operation, guys, I would say that it was a tactical success and a strategic failure. A, a tactical success because we won a great number of air-to-air -air victories over Singapore. A strategic failure because at the end of the day, it does not really alter the situation in Singapore. Um, it does not alter the situation in Burma. It does not alter the situation in the Dutch East Indies. There's nothing that we have done as a result of this raid that will have any sort of long-standing um, consequences for the Japanese, unfortunately. It is part of the uh, war of attrition in this sense that, you know, there is success there. There are, that does mean something. It doesn't mean that, you know, there was no, there was no point in doing it, but it was a, it was a, it was a failure in the sense that it, it really isn't changing anything as far as uh, the, the situation there is concerned. Um. Okay, so I'm going to load fuel up on both of these tankers. 
they are got level 10 detection, so honestly, we might lose these guys. I move them in under the cover of the carriers. But once they're done uh, filling with fuel, I'm going to run them south to Perth. It'll be interesting to see if they get attacked. They may also act as a little bit of a shield for the carriers, because you can see this tanker is a 10-10 detection. Our carriers have no detection. He does not know where we are. So that's good for us, but if he's going to move a whole bunch of like bombers into Malaya or, or, or I don't know, I guess he probably wouldn't do anything Borneo. He can't hit him over this far, but um, anyway. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to load fuel up on this tanker at Oosthaven. We're going to try and pull just a little bit more fuel out of, um, out of Palembang or off, off Sumatra. Uh, and then we're also going to load up uh, a tanker here at Tijilap. This one doesn't have any detection on it. It's a little bit safer. It is closer to Celebs and, and to Borneo, but I don't think he really is paying too much attention at Tijilap. So we'll load this guy up here as well. Uh, Tijilap has 3,000 fuel, uh, but Surabaya has like 50,000. So he can he can bring the fuel up from Surabaya. Um, is, the, is the refinery still on here? It probably shouldn't be, right? Yeah, we should probably turn the refinery off. I, I guess, actually, maybe we don't want to turn the refinery off because it generates supply, which I think we'll want for our our defense of Batavia. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. Uh, tactical success, strategic, and decisive. Uh, okay, maybe that's a better better description of it. I also think I'm going to form a surface task force, and I'm going to pull the guys who are lowest of, on fuel out of it, because I want to get these guys out of here as quickly as possible, and I don't want to be bogged down with refueling missions. Hmm. The Deroiter is the only one that's red. I wonder how quick we could get back to Australia. We almost have enough fuel to just blitz it down. But that would that would do a number of system damage. We probably shouldn't do that. It is tempting, though. We've got like two-thirds of the required fuel. Again, it's burning a lot of fuel for no real purpose. We are bringing some tankers up from the south. Some replenishment tankers up. Not a lot of fuel here on these guys, but we're also loading another one up at Perth with 9,000 fuel. Uh, FMOI, or L4, thanks for the follow. Um, but yeah, it is, it's, you know, we'll probably have to keep it on mission speed. Got plenty of fuel, but we'll head back down to Perth. I'll see, you know, this is... He saw, well, we don't actually know if he saw me on Western Australia. We saw Japanese subs. I'm not sure. In any event, we'll start heading back down toward Australia. I'm guessing it's going to take a week. So for the next week or so, our carriers are going to be out of Australia, off the West Coast. Um, and that is what it is. Remember, last turn we started moving some of our vessels, uh, a troop transport, which had just unloaded some troops, and then uh, a cruiser task force of ours is on its way back to Melbourne. Are these the guys who need the damn... Well, the destroyer needs a little bit of repairs. Yeah, these guys are battered up a little bit. And as a, as a reminder, when we learned that he had G3M Nels on New Caledonia, I decided to pull some of my shipping out of the Australian West Coast because the Nell can almost get you. It can get, like, out to here, I think with a torpedo. So it really doesn't leave you any room to maneuver on the west coast of Australia, which kind of makes the whole west coast of Australia a little bit um, dangerous to, to operate in. So rather than like leave these guys out who are in theory within range of enemy bombers out of Nomaya, I'm pulling, I'm pulling different vessels back to Melbourne, which is more shielded and, and more safe, frankly. Port Moresby continues to hang on by a thread. You can see here we've got 245 assault value here. We've got the 45th Indian Brigade, uh, which is really our best force here. Their morale is pretty poor, but they're starting to gain experience. I think they went in at 30. They're up to 32. Uh, fort level's at 1. We're trying to get it back to level 2. 
Uh, we've laid submarine minefields at Buna and Ley, although there's not very many mines at Ley. I think it's like 10. I think we had like 80 mines at Buna, so there's a better chance of hitting something near Buna. Yeah, Nomaya is going to be extremely annoying for a while. Do I know where the Kitty Butai is or Kido Butai? Yes, I do, actually. The enemy carrier formation is back this way. So you've got uh, three task forces spotted, one with patrol gunboats, one with light cruisers, and one with carriers. The carriers were like over here, I thought, last turn, or maybe over here. Looks like they pulled back a little bit. Again, that, that really does line up with my belief that these are fleet oilers. So I've got a bunch of subs that we're trying to swarm in on the area and try and, and uh, you know, maybe maybe engage him here. But I do think the carriers pulled back to refuel off one of these task forces, which I suspect to be a replenishment task force. So if I can put a fish in one of his, one of his fleet oilers and maybe send it to the bottom, that could shorten his ability to operate this far east. I do have decent captains on those subs, Kyle. Um, the trout, for example, uh, the captain is, uh, what's his name? Fino, you can see his naval, uh, his naval uh, talent is 72 and his aggression is 77. So that is very, very um, strong, if you will. Very aggressive, good naval talents. Uh, I have this guy in the gray back. I uh, forget his name. Saunders. Uh, he's not as good as he. 49 aggression. That's somewhat timid. 63 naval skills good, but the uh, aggression skills not. Uh, we also have Vincent, Commander Vincent, uh, 56 aggression, not very good, 51. I thought I had better captains in these boats. Some of them have better captains, don't they? 62 aggression, 63 naval, that's not bad for Binford. And then the Thresher has Commander uh, Alford, 68 aggression, 62 naval. So those are some pretty good, pretty good ratings. Curious to see where he's going to move. You can see the carriers say they're moving northwest, which would put them going this direction. But I suspect that's just because they were pulling back. These other guys, some of these guys are moving east, which again makes me think this group here is actually the tanker task force because they were moving east. He pulled his guys back moving northwest. So that would, that would presumably put them in the same, whoops, same spot. So let's move here. No. I just don't know where he's going to move to, right? Like, he could be pulling the carriers back. That's definitely possible. Sorry, I know it's not super exciting to see me do some of this submarine stuff. But who knows? Maybe we'll get a lucky hit butt explosion. Not very good with using submarines. I've not had very much effect, uh, success with them. And I don't know how much of that lack of success is me being bad. Or how much of it is me not, or me just being, you know, the fact that we have Mark 14s as our as our torpedo. We'll go refuel at Palmyra. Well, actually, no, we should move west. Mm, we won't get there this turn. Maybe we'll move here. Meanwhile, he's broken off two task forces here. To swing in past Palmyra, you've got a force here moving southeast, moving this direction. Um, three ships. We also have a force up here of heavy cruisers moving east. So he's obviously pushing some surface task forces in to attempt to bloody up our, our supply convoys. I'm actually, now that I think about it, I'm kind of skeptical he would actually pull his carriers back. It would be pretty foolish, I think, for him to pull his carriers back while he's sending surface raiding forces east. Um... That just doesn't seem likely. I'm tempted to be like, go boys, send out the patrol crafts and charge the enemy. But that's probably foolish. Can we form patrol boats at any of these bases? No. Nope. 
Okay. So we've got these guys that are moving in the opposite direction this way. Much slower, but that's where they're going. Two, tank two cargo ships carrying fuel. We also have some other cargo ships here. Um, we have these... These, these are kind of valuable. These are um, aircraft transport uh, vessels. They, they allow you to unload aircraft without like crating them up so they can be instantly ready for combat. Uh, they're also relatively fast at 16 knots. So I'm ordering them at flank speed to get the hell out of this area and actually head down to Pago Pago, which I think is relatively safe. Probably should move some of these other guys like not along courses that he's going to intercept. These guys are already passed and on their way to Australia with some fuel. All of these units here are moving directly away from where he's prodding. I'm curious to see how far he'll push his, push his vessels east. We have one surface task force here that is falling back to Pearl. What's their fuel situation? Could we hang him out a little bit longer? I don't want to engage him if he's got three heavy cruisers. This guy's really aggressive. He would definitely do it. He'd be like, charge! <laughs> um, do we have any surface task forces that we can pull out of the U.S. West Coast? Actually, you know what we could do? Since I'm, I've decided to bring the Americal Division off map, there's no reason to have... Whoops. There's no reason to have these these cruisers guarding them if they're moving off map. So I could form a new surface task force. We'll leave the Corvette there. Only one destroyer, which makes me a little bit uneasy. I can't switch the Admiral either because I can't. And then what we could do is we could move these guys here. No retirement allowed. And then we could move here, and then we're going to meet the surface task force, and we'll merge with them. So we could we could form a task force with one light cruiser, one heavy cruiser and a destroyer, and two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. And we can form them kind of out this way, like, again, out further out west. I don't know if he's going to keep pushing east with, this, east with this force, but if he does, and if he doesn't move his carriers in behind, then we might have a chance to engage these guys. Uh, if you move units off map, you do get the units back. Kushan, all it's saying is they're moving off map, they're going to move through the Panama Canal, and then they're going to come to Australia from the west. It is not as efficient. It is much slower. I think it's like a 30-day transit time instead of like 20. Uh, but they're going to move back out through Cape Town off map, um, and then they'll move into Perth from the west. So that's all that means. Meanwhile, the Australian 6th Infantry Division and two fighter squadrons are about to land at Perth. They should land this turn at Perth. So that'll be nice. I think they're two fighter squadrons, right? Uh, some Actually, no, 24 Blenheim 4s and 15 Hurricane Tropes. So 16 fighters and 24 um, bombers. So they're arriving there. Um, where are all these guys going? These guys are going to Los Angeles. These guys are going to Auckland with some extra fuel or supply, I guess. 32,000 or 3,200 supply. 32,000 fuel here going to, going to Auckland. Suv is a nice little airfield here. 53 fighters, modern fighters, uh, like 100 total aircraft, 150 total aircraft. Meanwhile, Vavu is continuing construction. You can see the fortifications are up to level 2. The port is up to level 1, working on level 2, 70, 73%. It's 20% to airfield capacity level 1. Once it is an airfield level capacity 1, then we can shuttle the P-40Bs from Pago to Vavu and then to Suva to strengthen the fighter force there, or vice versa. 
We also have 16 P-40Es, which could do that now. So that would that would give us another 50 aircraft effective between these three these three bases. Fanning Island. Where is Fanning Island? Sean Mack, the Buffaloes, I mean, the reality is we kind of have to use what we have. I don't have the aircraft really. Well, theoretically, I could upgrade these guys. But I, I'm not going to do it quite yet. I can't do it anyway. I think I have to... Needs an airfield level 7 or 20,000... Wait. With 20,000 supply? I think I have that. I'm not going to upgrade these guys quite yet, though, to F4, F3s. Uh, because I need to make sure the carriers get the replacements they need, and some of the carriers still have F4, F3s. Fanning Island near... Um, oh, over here? I mean, I've got troops on Fanning. It's a small detachment of New Zealand troops. It's not unoccupied. It's a dot base, too, so it's not a really... It's not, it's, it's not an effective base at the moment. There's no Palma. I don't have a Palmyre squadron with F4Fs. There's nothing on. There's no fighters on Palmyra. Meanwhile, you can see here our our search arcs are pretty strong. We should be able to keep all these guys in uh, in in sight. It is going to be overcast, which could throw some things off. I think most of my uh, Catalinas actually have radar though, so that helps. These guys might not. Oh, they do. ASB-1 radar, although it's grayed out, so I'm wondering if it's not fitted yet, like if we're not producing it yet. Um, I'd be really curious if he would come at Pearl. I was sort of teasing him when I saw his carriers, like he should come for another raid on Pearl. That could be fun. We have 113 fighters there. We have most of them being modern. I guess 40 of them are P-36As. The one saving grace of the P-36, though, is it's pretty damn maneuverable even though it doesn't have the firepower. Pretty good experience across the board as well for the guys there. So I'd be okay with that if he wants to if he wants to go for another another run of Pearl. That doesn't even count the flak that we have. We don't have a lot of medium or we don't have a lot of bombers that we could hit him with. That's about the only problem. But you can see here um, we've got 96 flak as well, which I think is pretty pretty substantial. The way flak works at these places is you get a portion of the ships that are anchored there. So the flak, you get some flak based off the fact that we've got all these battleships with a lot of flak, uh, flak pieces on them, so they help the defenses. Um, what's the situation with uh, only well, got twenty eight thousand docked. Plenty of fuel and supply. Wait, we only have two thousand supply there. Twenty two hundred supply at Brisbane seems low. We've got one hundred fifty or five hundred and seventy six thousand at Sydney. Seven thousand at Melbourne. Seems like Sydney is our supply depot for everything. Okay. So that's most of what I was going to do this turn. I did, you know, we have pulled our Air Force out of as much as we can out of Port Moresby. We put some of it here at Horn Island. We pulled some of it back to Australia. I don't know if these subs are any good. Might be getting shot up a bit. I don't think he's sending more bombardment task forces to Ambon. That's why we moved those subs there in the first place. So we're actually going to go ahead and pull these guys, I think, back to Brisbane. I think some of them are a little bit low on torpedoes, so we've got a sub-tender at Brisbane. We'll pull them back there. Okay. Um, Did these guys start moving the uh, task, the Ab ABDA? They did. Not, not very much. Um, where did they move it to? Was it Sumatra or Sebang? So you can see here, ABDA 1-1, one one, we moved about a fifth of the total ABDA force via air transport. So give it five more days and we'll get the whole thing out, out to Sebang. 
Oh, by the way, I was going to move like 60 army fighters down to Singapore to continue the struggle there. But I think I'm actually, now that we had that success, I think I'm planning on pulling them back. I don't really want to get into a situation where he surprises me and lands somewhere on Sumatra and then cuts my ability to pull the fighters out. I also, because I can't go south. The bases south have already been taken. That would block me from doing that. Um, and then I also don't want to really go, I don't really want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his air forces, right? So now that we had this big success down here, I would not be surprised if he moves a large number of bombers in and fighters and zeros. The reason that we thought Singapore might work is we knew he was only sweeping with Nates while he was bombing with Sally's. But if he's going to, like, attack with a bunch of zeros or do, like, fighter sweeps down there, I don't really want to, like, just get my fighter force decimated. So I pulled them back out of Sabang back to Rangoon. Rangoon's pretty well defended. It's got 125 aircraft. 114 of them are ready. Of those aircraft, almost all of them are fighters. 105 fighters. 95 of them are ready. Of those fighters, only a single Buffalo group of 14 uh, this is a very modern Air Force here. A lot of Hurricane Tropes. Good experience by all the air groups there. 50-plus on all of them. So this is a pretty good uh, a pretty good uh, situation in Rangoon for us with our fighter units here. Um, the British Division, by the way, has arrived. The 18th Inf Infantry Division has arrived. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and throw them on trains, and then we're going to go ahead and rail them down to... Actually, we should probably... Should we rail them to Pegu? We should probably rail them to, to Rangoon so they can get a little bit of that fatigue down. So that's another 400 assault value there. 63rd Indian Brigade is moving. They're about halfway. Situation in China. Oh, wait, am I moving these guys? Where am I? Oh, I'm not moving them. They're just sitting and move. Um, we were moving a couple of units out of uh, Xi'an, though, weren't we? We're moving them east along that railway line because I didn't, I didn't realize. Yeah, so they moved 15 miles. So three in two more days, they should get here, and then they'll move here. I did not realize that the roadways linked Sion to this railway over here and I don't want to just give them free access I'm gonna gonna set these guys over here or here where it's rough get them out of the clear terrain um, these guys are on this crossroads here but we could I'm tempted to push them further down the road but that may not be a great idea meanwhile we're gonna we're gonna push these guys back to the base they vacated here so they're about 20 miles in so two turns, they should be here, and then they should be able to make better progress through clear terrain to move back to Nanning to try and threaten the base there. Uh, we wiped out his, uh, his unit here, so I'm actually going to pull these guys back across the river. The river will make a much better defensive line. So we'll pull these guys across the river. Because if he crosses the river, he's got to shock attack him against really bad terrain. If I stay on the wrong side of the river, yeah, I mean, it's still good defensive terrain, but I don't know. Not good enough. Um, What do we still have down here? 601 assault value. These guys are resting in pretty good shape. Are they moved back to Quillen? They are. That headquarters unit is moved back to Quillen. We're a little bit weak there. I feel like now that we've won the race here, we should send some of these forces back the direction they came so that we don't leave this southern line too weak. What's the fortification level here? Three? They just got to three, and it's wooded, so that's actually a very good... This is a very good... Quiline is a very good defensive base, and even if he flanks and take Lu, takes Lucho, Quiline has a retreat route back into our own lines via this, this poor road here. So they've got a direct avenue back to the rear there. I'm going to move the 60th back this way down to Lucho, though. I'm so inefficient, though. Like, by the, the, the back and forth, the way that I'm issuing some of these orders, it is definitely going to lead to wasted supply, which China can't really afford. Um, Lucho, Chikikong. All right, so those guys are already at Chikikong. Okay. You know, we're bringing some additional reserves to the east here. We'll keep those guys going the direction they were going to strengthen this river line. What's Nanning's fortification set up? Two. Meanwhile, I really want these guys to die, so I'm going to keep... Keep threatening this flank here. We're going to keep moving them into Henang so they can get destroyed. I'm 
These guys are gonna melt. They have no supplies. Okay. All right. I think we're actually okay up here with this force blocking this easy route in. So rather than send more guys that direction reinforcing here, I'm actually going to send more down here to Tuyan to defend Tuyan. Is Tuyan clear? It's not. It's wooded. So Tuyan should be sort of our next fallback line. I should leave some engineers here to build this thing up. So we'll leave these guys here, move them into combat. We'll start building this base up. Only six engineers? It's got a decent amount of aviation support, though. Oh, by the way, in the event that stuff goes bad in Burma, we also have 32 hurricanes we can fly back over. That'll help. Okay. So the main defensive points in the south are going to be this river line here, and then... Tuyan down here. They're all linked back to Chungking with good roads, so they can fall back as necessary. Um, Chiki Kong is uniquely positioned where even if he drives north successfully, we have such a large force here, we could hit him in the flank and cut him off from all supply pretty easily. Uh, we are going to send a few units north on this narrow road up here to strengthen this. I want to get about 3,000 assault value here, leaving about 4,000 at Chiki Kong, and then um, I would like to try and get up to around 2,000 to Tuyan. Um, and kind of hold on to these southern these southern cities in China as well. We're at about sixteen hundred victory point advantage against the Japanese right now. I think it was seventeen hundred, so he's he's been gaining. Last turn, no ships sunk apparently. Um, ground units destroyed. I don't think anything was destroyed last turn. Wasn't. 3rd Cavalry Regiment, we should... It'll cost 36 to reform these guys. They're a decent unit, but that feels like a lot. Two political points to reform these guys, so we'll do that. They're part of a bigger force, too, so... Um, British base force unit here. Reform them. Reform them. Man, I'd love to reform the uh, FMSV brigade. I don't know if we have the, the troops in the pool, though, to build them back up. British units are, are better for that. Okay, so that'll be it for that. We still have 210 political points. Can you look in the pool? Which pool? Um, what are we looking at? Troop pool? So troop pool, I wish I could, I can hide the Soviets actually, so we'll do that. So troop pool, we've got a lot of, I mean, I don't know what the, the heavy industry stuff doesn't really mean much to me, but naval support, we've got a lot in the pool. Um, we've got 2,584 engineers are in pool. That's a lot of fucking engineers. Are those all American engineers? We have 559 Chinese rifle squads in the pool. We've used almost that much. We've been using a lot. Um half-inch anti-aircraft machine gun sections, sound detectors, 75 millimeter field guns. We got a fair amount of those all so far. Chinese cavalry squads as well. Uh, engineer vehicles, 106 of those are in the pool. We're building 100 of those a month. Uh, light armored car, New Zealand militia actually is interestingly enough one of the higher items on the pool. Um, 155 millimeter howitzers. We got a few of those. We haven't really used many of those. Most of our U.S. unit reinforcements are turned off at the moment. Um, a long tom. 
155. Yeah, Commonwealth troops rebuild excruciatingly slowly. 35 infantry squads for Canada. We've actually used 133 so far. I might not have all my Canadian reinforcements turned off. 30 Filipino infantry engineer squads. U.S. paratroop squads, 28. 28 Canadian militia. 23 M3 tanks. 23 105mm howitzers. Cannel I squads. AIF Australian squads. We have used 384 Australian infantry squads so far. We're only building 55 of those a day or a month. So that's almost two a day. 12 in the pool. And a lot of this stuff, the stuff, the build rate changes over time. Uh, the Canadian regulars, I'm curious where those are pulling. We have one brigade. The 13th Canadian Brigade is in the Southwest Pacific at Christmas Island. These guys are all militia, though, aren't they? Yeah, there's 108 militia. We do have them set to reinforce. So we could upgrade them, in theory, if we had the troops... We don't yet. I think you need all 108 to do it. I'm trying to think of what the... You know, actually, some of the units we rebuilt in Canada might be might be the cause of that. Yeah, those guys are turned off, so... These guys are turned on, though. The Rocky Mountain Red Ranger... I feel like I should use Canada more, more aggressively... Although they're militia, their reinforcements are set to on. I could, I could move them down to San Diego, pack them up, move them down to San Diego, get them on troop transports, get them into the Pacific War. I mean, in theory, the replacements are on. They could do it. This is a Cana regular Canadian infantry section here, the RCMP unit here. I mean, we've already done it, but... Oh, these guys are not free. Fuck. They're stuck. Uh, well, good thing I turned it off too late. The other guys are free. The Rocky Mountain Ranger Battalion can be changed. I don't know how you strip uh, units, Sean Mack. I'm not sure if you can do that. I can't disband them. There's no option to disband them. Okay. I'm guessing this is the same situation, right? Yep. I don't know if they started as militia or not, but I, I made the mistake that apparently some of the newer Canadian units or some of the Canadian units I didn't go back and look through did end up upgrading. So these guys are going to have cushy assignments the entire war. Those are militia. Okay. Prince Rupert. 97. These are Canadian Militia too, so they also are set to not upgrade. We could use 600 political points and get these guys into the war. But I don't have 600 political points to use. In any event, Winnipeg... Why did I? I guess I just completely forgot to turn most of the Canadian reinforcements off. Royal Canadian Mounted Police! Dudley Do-Right leads the charge at Iwo Jima. Alright. Combat units that are not... These guys are all restricted to West Coast. I think I forgot about Canada, too. So these guys are probably some pretty damn well-upgraded units. Although, in theory, the Alaskan forces make some sense to upgrade and whatnot. Those troops do as well. Okay. Okay. 
I should really turn all of these units off. Some I don't know why. I think the the confusion on my end is I turned some of the replacements off, but I left the some of the um, upgrades on. Like some of these units have upgrade on, but they have replace off. And most of them that are sitting in cushy billets on the west coast are probably going to upgrade, not replace, because they're at full strength, but they need to upgrade to new equipment. So I should be better at that. You can see I've got a lot of the uh, the replacements off, but also the new units I tend to forget about. I know this is super exciting watching me do this. But again, you can see other units where everything's turned off. So it's I'm super inconsistent, apparently. Okay. I suspect is most of the units that the game started with I had turned off, but I didn't think to go in when new units came in to turn off the new units. That would be my guess. First Irish Fusiliers. I can afford to get them into combat. I don't know why I'd be like, favoring getting uh, getting units out that are not even close to my best. I mean, the American units are, are the only ones that you get enough of in the pools that are really, really good. Okay, these guys just arrived. So we'll load them with fuel. We're going to go ahead and send them to Cape Town. At flank speed. Off map movements don't use fuel, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at the repairs going on at Cape Town. You've got the Prince of Wales and the Repulse both still under repair. The Repulse is down to 66 days left under repair. The Canopus, a subtender, is four days from completing its repairs. Um, we could probably actually move these guys out of the shipyard. So right now these guys are 6693. What happens when we pull them out of the shipyard to pier side? 6693 still. But we do drop the usage to 76,000 tons now in the in the the port facilities. Okay. We have the militia fighting the war and the regulars doing the police work. Damn straight, Sean Mack. Damn straight. All right. And I'm pretty sure I forgot a bunch of Indian units, too. Although there's a lot of new Indian units, so that may be just... I wonder if there's like a universal like turn off reinforcements for all bases. Um, wow, we could literally turn everything off here. Honestly, that might be the better thing to do. Let's do it like that. Then every single unit in the entire world stops pulling its reinforcements. I think the exceptions I should make are probably in China. There's a few units in China that we definitely want to we want to work on getting upgraded or or improved. So like engineer units should always have their stuff turned on, I think. For the Chinese. And then some of these It's also sort of a supply factor as well, where like if too many units are trying to draw, that can be problematic. Artillery should probably also draw always. But anyway, uh, Fiji line troops, 
Yeah. I kind of feel like some of the... I, I want to be a little bit more selective. I'm going to wait a couple of days to do any reinforcements. I want to be a little bit more selective about the Australian troops that we allow to upgrade and the ones that we don't. I agree the Fiji line is important, but I don't have enough units in the pool right now to replace any divisions or brigades, militia troops. I guess we could set this one unit. That way we can be more targeted on what we upgrade and what we don't. I think that's just a, a better route to go. Um, and then maybe... Uh, do we, do we want to reinforce Port Moresby? Like, I don't want to just give it up. On the flip side, I don't want to... I don't want to waste troops that aren't going to make a difference. Um... Although it sure would be great, like, if, if one of these Australian brigades... Well, these already have regulars. Or battalions. But, like, oh, those have battalions. Those have regulars, too. So do these guys. There's actually no reason for any of them to upgrade then. All right, so all those guys are regulars already. So I guess we can actually turn, turn reinforcements off. Yeah, these guys don't have their tanks yet, so we'll let them upgrade. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the aircraft pools. Um, aircraft replacement pool. So we'll go with most end pool. We'll filter out the Soviets. No, we won't. I can't filter the pools? That's stupid. <sighs> aircraft without pools, aircraft not building, aircraft with and without, aircraft with pools. Okay. Why can't it filter the Soviets? Wait, now I can. That's weird. All right. So you can see here in pool, we've got 40 OSU, 2U Kingfishers, 25 Dauntlesses. We're building 21 of those a month. 25 Whirlaway pieces of shit, 14 Vincent Ones, 23 Fulmers. We're not, apparently we have no, I don't know the difference between the production rate and the replacement rate. I don't fully get that. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, so we've got Vincent's, we've got Fulmers. Um, all of the aircraft with larger pools are pretty much just reconnaissance but we do have 20 f4 f3 wildcats currently in the pool we're not actually making any of them uh, but they are sitting there we've also got 20 p400 air cobras we're making 36 of those a month so we're actually making over one of those a day the hurricanes are in the dutch pools so we've got 15 hurricanes in the dutch pool there's 12 uh, a month being built there that actually brings up an interesting idea Um, do we want to up? I feel like that'd be a waste, though. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Part of me says, like, let's upgrade these Dutch planes to Hurricanes, but they're going to get just crushed anyway by the by the Japanese Zeros. Is it worth it? They got good pilots, though. That's the interesting thing. Hmm. Uh, Millens, thanks for the follow. The Old Grey Gamer also, thanks for the follow. I know that was like 36 minutes ago, but I still appreciate it. Well, the thing is, like, if I want, I can withdraw these guys. And then this squadron will reform, I think, off map in 60 days, assuming we lose the base. So I sort of have a choice to either get the Hurricanes now with them in the Dutch East Indies, or if I withdraw them, then I make the Dutch East Indies slightly 
ever so slightly easier for the Japanese, but I get a new fighter unit in two months from with Dutch pilots. The Dutch also apparently get P-40E Warhawks. So I can withdraw that other unit, so we withdrew the Hawks. I don't think I can actually withdraw the Buffaloes. I think the B-339Ds go away permanently. If you withdraw, it says, like, where do you want to move your men? So I think these guys are locked. So because those guys are locked, I think what I'm actually going to do here is this group has no squadron. They're going to be out for two months. We're making 12 of them every every two, every two month. So we'll have 24 of them by the time the new ones come online. So they should be able to, to outfit those guys fully. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... No upgrade possible. Lack of supply is not the case. It is a level 5 airfield, I think. Oh, no, it's level 4. Is Batavia level 5? They're both level 4. We're going to move those guys up to Batavia. We'll see if they can pull new aircraft or not. I'd love to shoot down, surprise him with some modern aircraft. Hey, North. Maybe, Neuhauser. It's also the, um, it's also the victory points. Okay. So, those PT boats ready yet? I think they're still repairing. Yeah, one day each. Where did the, how did these guys do? Wait. Didn't he land troops here? At Matterham? Did he? I thought he landed troops at Matterham last turn. That's why he sent the PT boats down. He pulled his troops back? The valiant charge of the Dutch PT boats drove the Japanese forces back. Apparently. Well, they're going to get bombed down. Well, they're going to get bombed anywhere, I guess. Let's pull them back here. I mean, I don't have heavy forces here. I don't think that's the case. Okay. We get the Hornet in seven days, guys, so that'll be coming soon. We still actually have quite a few aircraft at uh, in the Dutch East Indies. I should pull some of these units back, though, because I don't want him bombing the airfield there when I have no fighters to, to stop his bombing and then lose a bunch on the ground. Hey, the man from Texas. How you doing there? Hope you're doing well. Why am I talking like this? I don't know. That's not even a southern accent. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to pull a bunch of my, my planes back to Batavia. Not all of them, but at least some of them to lessen the, the targets that he'll have. Only only 26 left there. Meanwhile, my troops at Batavia itself, we have 146 aviation support with 34 on the ground, so that's good. Um, yeah. Hey, Sean Mack. With the, uh, with the butcher there, right? All right. So I think that's probably going to do it for this turn. Um, you're thinking about buying Gary Grigsby's War in the East? They're making War in the East too right now, I think. 
thought I saw something about them releasing that later this year. So that might be something you want to be aware of. Not to say don't buy War in the East, but I think War in the East 2 is coming out later this year. All right. Uh, we finally dropped the mines at Karen's, so we did get the, the mine layer unloaded there. How many mines are in Morsby? Only 33. I don't think we'll ever get a war in the Pacific 2 P. Warner. They've been streamlining and somewhat simplifying their games. Like, they massively simplified the air combat in War in the West. Um, I don't like the week-long turns in War in the West either. But it feels like that would be the opposite direction of the way they're going. We're still unloading cargo here at Norfolk Island. These guys are slow as fuck unloading this equipment. 28th Australian. We're still unloading 25. I guess they are artillery pieces, right? Trying to unload over a beach. Then we got to bring them supplies. Meanwhile, we're still unloading the 101st USN Base Force at Vavu. We've got 10 motorized support that's still working on getting off the boat. Off the boat. All right, we'll turn their upgrades on. Also, the U.S. units should have their, and probably the New Zealand units and the base forces. These guys should all be turned on. I don't know why I click each one of those manually. There's a button to do it all at once. I just don't want to drain what what limited reserves we have of Australian forces just in, in Suva because we've got Australian forces elsewhere. But uh, I do think it makes sense to, to do that for the American ones there. Same for the guys on Pago. Not that fragment, though. Okay. The horror. Yeah, probably. All right, so I am going to try and bomb this force that is moving southeast with our uh, with our Catalinas again. I took off all the naval search of that one unit to try and be able to hit them up a little bit better. Um, I still have the Bolos and the Catalinas set to bomb. Also, by the way, we do have some fortresses that apparently two of them flew out to naval attack, and uh, they might actually be able to re reach these guys. Range 12. But apparently they, they attempted to attack and they were unable to find the enemy because of bad weather. They probably were attacking with extended range payloads at 1,000 feet. I'm curious how they would do against the carriers. Probably not very well. But hey, it'd be amazing to put a couple of bombs into a flight deck. So we'll see. But I think that's going to be it for, for this stream. I appreciate you all coming out. To the new followers, thanks. Uh, to the subscribers, thank you for the continued uh, support. Um, uh, Kushin specifically, I know you you resubbed up today, so thank you for that. Uh, and uh, I'll finish this turn offline. Probably get it back to XRG tonight or tomorrow, and then we'll see what you know what what he turns it around as. I know he's got another big game going against uh, Dadman, so um, you know this might be a few days, might not be. We'll see. Until next time, though, guys. This is the historical gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out. <laughs>